Hi, class. So this is a continuation of our first discussion, which is about the background of meteorology as a science. Now we're going to talk about why it's important to study and then teach meteorology. Well, to study meteorology is it's a given that weather and climate affect it affects our lives and they are all around us. So we have to be aware of what is happening all around us and why it affects you know the different activities of people, including our work and of course some leisure time outside and even um, our specific locations are concerned too when it comes to you know the humidity and then when we talk about you know how we can forecast the weather why it's important to to discuss the different hazards and atmospheric phenomenon because we are often affected by it in fact it costs billions of dollars per year when we talk about weather related damage and we are not innocent about this since the philippines is one of the countries uh, often we are visited by these typhoons and we are familiar with the different hydrometeorological hazards in our country so to move on we're going to uh, just browse to the different branches of meteorology so in different resources and even textbooks you can find different cl classifications or like uh, major branches and sub branches of meteorology and oftentimes you will find meteorology under environmental science and in some textbooks it's under atmospheric sciences and as i've mentioned in our first video that now it's slowly being replaced with the term earth and then uh, water and then atmospheric science well it has a reason why because meteorology just like biology is interconnected with different branches of science we cannot understand meteorology as a science without knowledge in physics chemistry and biology so here are 15 branches of meteorology according to earthhow.com this is how they classified the branches branches of meteorology so their major categories include weather and climate physics and life science so basically the focus of those under it is weather and climate for this one it has six sub branches or categories and uh, physics four and then life science three so these categories as you see here involves the science of meteorology which basically deals with weather and climate then atmospheric physics of course applying physical processes to meteorology such as aerodynamics radiometry and geomagnetism so that's how broad this science is and it involves different scientists different experts in order to forecast and to give us a broad range of information about the conditions this atmospheric conditions and phenomena so life science is also involved because we know and we're going to study how humans affect you know the condition of the atmosphere as well as how these atmospheric conditions affect the biosphere now and also its interaction then weather and climate yes the study of weather and climate from past present and future it's specifically for weather and climate climatology uh, deals with the long-term weather patterns and how will that uh, studying this or noting the history of these patterns observing and studying these patterns how would that affect the 
future. So as we know, meteorology, yes, is the study of the also the study of the chemistry and physics of weather and climate. Now, for climatology, as I've mentioned, it studies the past and how that will affect the future. That's why we have this term global warming, and that's because of uh, the study of the history of the, the changes of these patterns, long-term weather patterns. So, um, when we want to study past weather patterns also, okay, and examine how these um, prehistoric climates have changed in the geologic time scale, that's the study called paleoclimatology. And then paleotempestology is the same study of uh, prehistoric climates, specifically tropical cyclones. So it deals with the yeah, tropical cyclone specifically. Now we also have barometry, which is um, yeah, a basic study or science involved in, the, um, un in understanding weather and climate, specifically how atmospheric pressure is measured. And that's what we often... Um, Observe if you will go to Pagasa and uh, if you watch weather related news, and uh, we are presented information about the atmospheric pressure, topoclimatology. So, to how topographic relief influences local climate in the lower air layer. So, these are under the subcategories or branches under weather and climate. Now we move on to atmospheric physics, which has aeronomy, radiometry, aerodynamics, hydrometeorology, geomagnetism, and geophysics. So aeronomy deals with how chemical or wants to study about how chemical and physical properties are composed in the upper region of Earth and even other planets. Okay. So the physical processes in weather and climate can be described under atmospheric physics. So, for example, aerodynamics describes how air circulates in the atmosphere. So, it's an important study. Um, also, radiometry measure is studies or wants to. Uh, discover or know the incoming solar radiation from the sun. So this particular science uh, aims to measure incoming solar radiation from the sun. So our next video, I'll discuss further about the different spheres of the earth, as well as the structure of the atmosphere and how it relates with the other sphere or how it is influenced by the other spheres or systems. Next is hydrometeorology. It focuses on how this energy is transferred between the land surface, water, and the atmosphere. So we also have geomagnetism, geophysics. So these, all of these, uh, although geo meaning land uh, is part of the geosphere, the study of the geosphere, but later on we will know why is it related with the study of meteorology or understanding weather and climate. And lastly, life science. So we have bioclimatology and it deals specifically with how climate interacts and affects living things. And of course, we also have geobiology how the biosphere, the area inhabited by living organisms, relate to the lithosphere or the land and the air or the atmosphere. Next is biometeorology. So here it deals with how atmospheric conditions and weather patterns impact living things. So you see, meteorology is a, a broad and a wide interrelated branch or study. But um, as I have mentioned earlier, or if you will look 
at your course guide, we will just focus on the topics that will be uh, discussed, okay, and that we need to teach to our students in junior as well as in senior high school. And if you will look at this chart, okay, what, what do you notice with this chart? If you will look at the labels, we have external forcing, the sun, volcano, solar energy, the atmospheric motion and physics, climate change, human activities, terrestrial energy, moisture, ocean motions, ocean chemistry and biology, terrestrial ecosystems, lower atmospheric chemistry, land use, gases and particulates, and so on. So this um, particular figure shows that Earth is a system. And these are just uh, examples of interactions that you will see between the atmosphere, the lithosphere, and the hydrosphere, and of course, the biosphere. So if you will note the arrows, we see the connection of how the atmosphere affects the biosphere as well as the other spe spheres in the Earth system and also how it interacts. And uh, a particular example is, let's say, a dryness in a particular, in the eastern Oregon, um, a particular place in the U.S. caused by the mountains to the west. Next, the dense Amazon, let's say, Amazon vegetation that recycles water between the surface of the atmosphere, then the bright snow enhancing Arctic cold and ocean currents that make winter in Oslo, Norway, Norway warmer than places much closer to the equator. So here in this figure, it simplifies the Earth system. And if you will see on the upper part of the diagram, it represents purely physical aspects of the Earth, such as ocean currents, winds, cloud formations, and temperature distributions. And the bottom half of this figure depicts the constant exchange of material throughout the systems, a process known as cycling. So these are part of the life cycles. These exchanges occur between and among the living and non-living realms, and they both affect and are themselves affected by the physical components of the earth system. So this uh, chemical and biological cycles, uh, part of, yes, chemistry, and then life science, and then combination of uh, data or information about uh, atmospheric pressures and uh, how these um, how the wind circulates as well as uh, its relation with the mountainous areas and its location on the east or on the west how does that affect weather and climate. So to better understand it, we're going to deal first with the earth system in our next video. But before that, what's in it for you as BS Ed science students? Now, I've presented to you the different branches of meteorology to just show you how broad the science is, and as well as to note which among those branches, um, well, a little bit of each of those branches, will be tackled in the micro topics or micro lectures that we're going to have soon and also some activities or exercises for physics. Then if you will note here, uh, I've downloaded this from the Philippines Secondary Learning Competencies of the Department of Education. You will note that as early as grade three, Okay, as far as I could remember, during our elementary days, we were taught about cloud formation, the different climates, and then 
we have to, yes, the students are taught to describe the different types of weather. And of course, they also have to be aware of this meteorological hazard such as typhoon. Now, aside from that, they're also taught to interpret those data that they see on the news. So if they hear the terms uh, low pressure, high pressure, and intertropical convergence zone, so knowledge of those. Now, if you will notice here, when the student reach grade 10, there is no discussion about uh, meteorology. It, um, so for grade eight and grade nine, it focuses on these hazards and um, how the students uh, may or uh, may relate or be given more information about climatic phenomena, global warning, El Nino, and how does that affect our economy, the properties, as well as the lives of different people, and how can we contribute to those pollution and our uh, interaction with the atmosphere and other spheres. So for senior high school, which is not included here in the curriculum guide, since it is um, part of the discussion in earth science and disaster readiness and risk reduction, uh, you can just uh, visit or download specific curriculum guide for those, for you to uh, gain knowledge about the specific topics in meteorology included in this courses. So why do they have to um, tell you all about this now? Because um, you will be given this individual project and this is due on March 12, 2021. And as part of your course, I would like you to prepare a lesson plan and a video demonstration of any meteorology related topics from grade seven to 10, or you can choose from any senior high school subjects such as DRRR and earth science. So I'll be providing you guidelines on how you should prepare your lesson plan and demo. But what's important is for you to submit next Monday the following details. So a topic from a, con a content standard that you will be, um, that you can download from any curriculum guide from grade seven to 10 or choose from the subjects DRR or earth science. Then of course it's equivalent learning competency required or learning objectives. Then specific grade level, your name, course, and section. So that's what you need to um, check. What topic are you interested in and what a particular uh, topic related to meteorology would like you would like to present. So that's it, guys. I hope that um, you'll watch this video before Monday and then be prepared to submit next Monday. That will be February 15th. The following details I'm requesting from you. So thank you guys for watching this second video lecture. God bless.